Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I plan on showing you my technique on how to make a bird in watercolor. Um, a lot of times people want to use watercolor to make very playful and um, whimsical and loose and, um, paintings rather and um, I really like that style. However, mine tends to be more rigid and detailed and I'm never usually going for something loose or playful, um, but I do love that look. Uh, it's just not something that I do. Um, so an example of what I plan on doing for this video is recreating this bird that I did just a couple of days ago. So as you can see, um, it's just not very loose. There's not a lot of bleeding of the colors. There are, however, some splashes. I'm not gonna do those splashes in the video um, tonight. However, um, I'm gonna be playing around with these colors, but really I'm gonna just show you um, the techniques I use in order to get kind of tight lines that just um, render more detail and less of that kind of flourishy watercolor that a lot of people know watercolor to be. Um, so let's get to the video. Hope you enjoy. Also, hit subscribe and you'll see my, um, you'll get notifications when my videos come out. I try to post them once a week or so. Sometimes it's a little bit longer, um, but that's always my goal. And let me know if there's anything you wanna see or something you wanna see more in detail of or anything that you're interested in that I've done. Um, if you want more details, let me know. And I'm loving the conversations that are coming up in the comments and keep it coming. And yeah, thumbs up my video. I would so really- here we are in the studio. And I have this reference right here. This was, again, the painting that I did just a few days ago. I'm going to be using it to do a very similar thing over here. Um, for this, I am going to be using just some various brushes. Um, these are, I don't use any particular brand of brushes. I know I got this one at um, Blick. This is a six round. And then I have a three dash zero round. So this is very small and I'll use this for the detail in the eyes and maybe some of the beak. And then this is a flat brush and it's size number two. And I'll use this mainly for the beak and maybe adding some small hints of feathers. Um, I also have my cup of water. And I am going to be using my Cotman pans of watercolor okay so Windsor Newton Cotman and um, so we will see how this goes so I'm actually going to start at the head and then I'm gonna go down I am thinking I'm just kind of doing this plan of attack in my mind now one thing that I did that I don't suggest you doing is when I made the little sketch, I did it in a 2B pencil and it's super smudgy and it could affect the color and the quality of the watercolor because um, those smudgy type grades of lead will probably mix in with the watercolor. So I'll try to get some of it off. It wasn't my best idea today, but for some reason I just was a little lazy and I don't know, hoped for the best. So let's see what happens. Let's just continue hoping for the best here. So I have, when I'm looking at just the head, I have some um, small kind of wispy feathers of the head and the neck and then I have this beak area that's really black so the first question is what do I do first do I do the black part first or do I go ahead and do the feathers first and I'm going to suggest you go in and do the feathers first and that way I didn't do this on here and there's a little bit of a gap where I, of white, 
basically because I didn't want to get too close to the black and make it bleed in. So I should have done the back feathers first and then done that black beak and eye area last. So I'm going to do that at this time. So I made a lot of mistakes last week, but I'm not used to doing these birds and um, I don't know. Okay, so the head feathers are kind of a yellowish green. I'm going to like just change up some of the coloring a little bit, I think. I'm not sure I'm in love with the bird that I made. So I, instead of doing this lime green, which I think I used yellow green and olive greens and some sap greens, I'm going to change that into more of a turquoisey and phthalo green. So bear with me. I'm not really sure what I'm doing. The good thing about doing birds is that you know you don't have to get the colors exact you just need to go with the flow a little bit and make them fun so i'm starting out with kind of a grayish green that i mixed up myself and i'm just going to go in and make some lines nothing crazy uh, i don't even have to you know these little hair marks that I'm making aren't really going to show through, so I really just want to make sure that I have a gap between, you know, the a gap filled between the um, beak and the actual feathers. And I'm going to do that kind of all the way around. Now notice I'm not wetting my paper. I don't really like the wet on wet technique. A lot of watercolor artists use that and it's fantastic for them. I just, that's for looser work. Um, you know, people that, or artists that enjoy that kind of um, loose and playful where the colors bleed into each other. Very pretty, I just, I'm never going for that. I'm always going for kind of tight and rigid, just like my personality, very boring. Nothing fun about me. I've always been that way. That's not true. I was fun once, but in my adulthood, I've become boring. So here we are. So we're, we've got a nice, jade green to kind of just fill in that area and make sure that um, I'm not going to see any paper between the bird and the beak. Okay, so my next plan of attack is to kind of figure out what I'm doing next. So I'm actually, I'm going to do like a dark blue on the top of the head there. And that's gonna be my darkest color. So I can go ahead and do that now. And um, yeah, I'm gonna do that now because I wanna wait for this jade to dry before I touch it, but I'm not planning on touching it with this blue that I'm about to lay down. So it's a very, very uh, vibrant blue, which is great. I'm gonna dull it down with some Prussian. So I'm using Prussian blue and phthalo blue. And phthalo blue is so beautiful and vibrant. Um, so you wanna be careful. So I am going and kind of making some individual like hairs. They're coming out a little I want them to be thin and I just want to kind of give this bird a little mohawk thing at the top. Okay, that looks nice. 
and I'm not even going to wait for it to dry before I put in another color. Because I don't use the wet on wet technique, you don't have to wait for things to like dry too much there. I'm using so much paint in comparison to water that um, things dry pretty quickly. Now, as you can see, I've made like a lighter layer of this turquoisey color and I'm actually gonna go back in with the blue, the dark blue and just kind of, um, I'm gonna go the other way. So instead of going out toward the outside of the animal, I'm gonna just kind of head back in toward the beak. And that's gonna just add some details in my feathers. Nothing crazy, nothing crazy. Just a little bit to add a little dimension here. Okay. And so, now I've just got to figure out something to do for this green. I'm going to bring the green up a little bit. Um, but, you know, I don't want the head to necessarily stick out because it's the feathers down here that I want to be. I want that to be the wow factor. So I'm going to be careful on what I do next. I think what I'm actually going to do is just um, I think I'm just gonna add a little water and I just put a little bit of water and some turquoise to that and I'm just gonna kind of tone it down a little bit. I'm not gonna add anything any major details. I'm just going to let those colors bleed a little bit. Because as much as I like these, you know, details with the hair, you don't want the whole thing to be detailed. I mean, maybe you do. That's just not how I normally do things. I don't want it to be super detailed all around. Um, but some detail makes the whole thing popped, pop. Okay, so there's a lot of pretty purples in here, and I'm gonna probably add those down here a little bit, maybe some more green. However, I'm kind of putting my head in and poking, and just to see if I can start on the beak. The thing about the beak is that you have to be careful when you start adding paint next to something you just painted, you d things will start to bleed that way. So you've got to be careful. Um, I'm going to wipe my paintbrush off and I'm going to start on the eye. Now the eye on this bird, it just has a little bit of red there on the iris. I feel like I made that color up. I don't think the bird's eye is really red. So I am going to make it yellow. And the reason I'm going to make it yellow is because that will contrast really nicely with the purple. So I'm going to use Amboge, which is um, a little bit of a darker yellow. I think I'm going to add some raw umber to it. Sometimes I'm not really sure what I'm doing. I just know what, I know the gist of what colors will make when you combine. And I just kind of use my gut a lot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color, or color, I'm gonna paint in the whole iris. And I'm not gonna worry about like trying to keep it into the small circle because the, um, pupil is going to be black and so it will get um, painted over if that makes sense. So just do the best you can here and I've already messed up because there is a part here that I don't necessarily want paint on and so whoops 
I am going to be erasing that. Although it's not so much that I don't want any paint on it, I'm gonna have to erase that. So how do you erase watercolor? Well, you wait till you dry and wait till it dries. What I can do before a little bit is take another paintbrush and just kind of, because the it's still wet, take another paintbrush and kind of see if you can pick it up. And this is a little bit of a tedious process because you've got to make sure the paintbrush is nice and dry and then kind of scrub it out. And I'm using an incredibly small paintbrush and that's going to take some time but as you can see I've been able to lighten that color considerably and that might be all that I need to do it's still going to be black it's just going to be um, very light so I might just keep it that way and see what happens yeah that's exactly what I'm going to do I'm going to stop stressing about that but the next thing I'm going to do is it's still this top the top of the head here is still a little wet and so I am gonna wait just a moment so while I wait I can kind of lay down some of um, the colors here um, the main part of the body is very vibrant, very beautiful, very whimsical. Love it. That's going to be fun. That's the easy part. It's like the tight detail part that's a little more complicated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start adding in some feathers down here. And I'm going to start at the bottom and kind of work my way up so that the, fe the feathers look a little more natural and they layer correctly how they would layer in reality so all right instead of this yellow I'm going to sub substitute this really um, pretty jade and the jade color in case you're interested I mixed up from using hookers dark and um, Chinese white so always make sure you're kind of painting in the direction of the feathers. And I can go a little bit um, a little bit more looser here because it's really just the head that we want to keep detailed. And again, this is just how I paint. Um, there's a hundred. There's an infinite amount of beautiful ways to paint. My way is not the best. My way is just my way. And my way changes all the time because the way that I was painting six months ago was different from the way that I paint now. So I'm always evolving. I have all these projects. They're all so different. And um, so this is just a small project that I'm working on now for myself, just some personal art that I'm doing. And this is what I'm doing for that. So I'm going to actually make this a little bit darker. And I'm going to make it darker by adding rare green earth. And that's a Daniel Smith color. Daniel Smith has great paints. Um, they're very vibrant, very light fast. I use his watercolors very often. I only have a couple. I have about 12, but every time that I use them, I'm super impressed. So what's happening is, is as I'm, as I'm pulling these feathers down, they are mixing a little bit with the jade ones underneath because they're still a little wet. I'm so not worried about that though. It's not a big deal. This is coming out a little bit, um, darker than I had planned. I'm not saying with the rare green earth, I'm just overall, I had a lighter thing in mind when I was coming up.
up with it in my mind, but alas. Sometimes these birds and, you know, some of the other watercolors and art I do, they just kind of evolve on their own. I space out sometimes and let the whole process happen, and by the end I'm like, huh, that looks nice. Sometimes it doesn't look so nice, though. Now you'll notice as I'm getting kind of closer to the outside of the body here, I'm just kind of making detailed little feathers. Um, I really like that. I'm always happy when that works out. Now, I have a line here. Sometimes I forget to erase those lines. So I'm gonna do that now. This is a little risky to be erasing your wet paint because you could get some eraser crumbs in wet paint, but that's fine. Okay, so now I've got to like figure out like a nice color for down here. I just decided I'm going to use a super pearlescent white. That would be fantastic. I don't know how that's going to come out though. So I have these pearlescent watercolors, which are so pretty and I never use them. So now I'm going to. So I think I'm going to just see what will happen with this white. So there are a lot of companies that make the pearlescent watercolor. I'm going to just do it on the side here. Oh, that looks so pretty. Oh, I love it, love it, love it. Okay, so I'll tell you, um, Daniel Smith makes pearlescent watercolors. They're in a tube. He might have them in a um, pan too, but I know he makes them in a tube. Um, who else makes pearlescent watercolors? The ones I have here are, some of them are from, oh, look at that, that's, that's pretty. Some of my pearlescents are from Koi, Secure Koi. And um, those ones are really nice. I also have ones I got on Amazon from this company called Paul Rubens, and they make other watercolors too. Um, I haven't used their regular watercolors, but they tend to get good reviews from, you know, artists, and, but I think they might technically be student grade. I know my mother-in-law has a set. Don't be afraid to try student grade. Sometimes the student grade things work out really well and sometimes not I mean you just have to play around but you know I think some artists are like really averse to using um, just really averse to using student grade and you shouldn't be sometimes student grade can be nice all right now what's happening here is this is looking beautiful however I would just like to see some purple in there. So while this is still wet, I'm gonna mix up my favorite color combination, which is blue and indigo, just to make like a, a little bit of a pale purple. Although this is not pale. Liking that. This is coming out nice. And something over here. I'll add a little more purple. So, yeah, purple and um, indigo is one of my favorite combinations. It just makes this nice bluish purple. I mean, obviously, but it's just, it's really nice. Okay. So that looks pretty good, but now I just feel like it's making this green look a little flat. 
So I'm going to go in with uh, Daniel Smith. Now, I'm not doing a very good job at letting the watercolor dry. And that's mostly due to a lack of patience right now. Sometimes I feel like, oh my gosh, this thing's looking so horrible. I have to fix it right away. And in doing so, I let things bleed where normally I wouldn't. So I've got to be careful. And I'm going to just go in with straight purple. This is Daniel Smith. I think it's called Imperial Purple, I'll tell you. But it's very vibrant. It's pretty. And I'm going to use it. And I'm going to make sure you know the color. Because I know color is important. So yes, this is called Imperial Purple. Again, Daniel Smith. Great, great stuff. And that looks so pretty that I'm just going to put a hint of it elsewhere. Okay, I don't want to go too much because what tends to happen is I'll get really enthusiastic about something and I'll go crazy and then I'll ruin the painting. So it happens way too much. So this looks really good so far. I love the blue and green at the top and it's kind of bluish green down here. And then I like the pops of purple and the pearlescent was a fantastic idea, so I'm so excited about that. I'm gonna actually add a little pearlescent here. This is what happens though, I start, this is what I, you know, the these watercolor experiences sometimes just take on a life of their own. And what starts with one thought just becomes something completely different. So that's the beauty of just not having a plan and letting God do the work through your hands. That's what's happening here. And it was funny because I literally today was like, I never use my pearlescent watercolors. I should really do that. And look at this, it's coming out fantastic. And now that I'm looking at my pearlescents, I'm like, oh my goodness, why aren't I using these every day? They were so inexpensive on Amazon. Okay, so next I am going to, I'm gonna start over here and I'm gonna, start doing the beak. No, I'm going to start doing this black for the pupil. And I've got to be really careful there because it is hard to erase watercolor. It's possible, but it's better to just not make the mistake. So for the black on the pupil, I am using lamp black. Why lamp and not ivory? Because ivory black is in my other studio. and actually it's the gamboge eye poking through. I think that looks really good and I'm gonna leave it. And finally, I am going to do the black of the beak. So this is a really fun part because it's kind of easy and there's not much anxiety in just a flat black beak. But I am going to change my position. Normally I'd change the position of the paper, but for this video, I will move myself. So there's a little bit of a line where it's more grayish white up here. Okay, so I am going to be careful not to um, overstep that boundary with the black. And it's not white or, you know, it's not the paper underneath. It's just, um, you just want to be careful and not make it too black.
my hands are starting to shake a little bit. It's like surgical precision. So you'll notice that I don't use the wet on wet technique at all. I don't really like the unpredictability of watercolor. For a lot of artists, that's their favorite thing about watercolor. But I like to control my mediums. And um, the best way to do that is to just paint wet on dry. The other thing is when you paint um, with more paint and less water, then you won't get those blooms that people talk about. Um, they're just basically patterns that the water has created in the paint as it spreads out, and it looks almost like a bloom. Um, I know there are other terms for it, and um, I don't really like the blooms. There are artists that use the blooms to supplement their work, and that's awesome. I'm just not so much into the blooms. So that looks pretty good. It's not super dark. I mean, there it's not flat black. There are areas where it's kind of light here and there. But next I am going to show you how I do this kind of light color. And I think that light color is actually a manifestation of the light kind of coming down this way. And so it's creating kind of a light color on top. So I already have black. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of tickle and I know that's weird but I'm going to tickle kind of the black of the beak up and see what that looks like. So there was only water on my brush. And that just looks more natural than if I had added Payne's gray or just lightened up some black. There's different ways you can do this, but if you bring up the black you have, it just I don't know. It looks good. It looks good regardless. You just gotta play around with what works for you. So there we go. And you'll notice that it, it slowly gets lighter and then at the very top here, it's very light. And that looks, that's kind of what I was hoping for. Right, so that was good, and even the eye looks good. I'm not gonna mess around too much with that. I will see if I can scrub it down a little bit later. It might not, but I'm gonna just take a clean brush and just kind of see if I can capture some lighter area here. And that looks fine. I don't need to play any more with that. And the top of the bird is pretty much done. So the big goal here was to make sure there was no gaps in between the beak and the feathers. So I think I've achieved that. And everything looks really good. It even looks really good from my angle as I'm kind of bobbing my head around and seeing the glitter and the shimmer. And I'm oh, I just love it so much. So now I'm gonna mix up these colors. So this is going to be very brilliant phthalo blue and I'm going to use this turquoise color and I'm going to even use kind of this bluish green here. So let me just tell you that 
I am going to use thalo blue for the really brilliant blue. Now, I do recommend using Daniel Smith for this turquoise as well. This is called Cobalt Teal Blue, and it's Daniel Smith. Absolutely love it. However, I have this other color I'm going to use. It's the same color. It's called Mermaid, and it is from a company called Spiren Bar. Oh, sorry. Spearer Farben, and they have this set of watercolors. I can't open this because I've completely like decimated what their palette is. I just use this as my storage case, but this is what it is. I got it on Amazon, and in that set, I got this beautiful color here. It's mermaid. I just love it. I pretty much bought the set for the one color, which sounds crazy, but I need those color, you know, all the other colors in order to fill in. Um, what I didn't have and what I run out of with my other sets. But anyways, regardless, this is the color that it comes out. So pretty. And it's basically the same color as that Daniel Smith I was telling you about. But I do recommend the Daniel Smith because they're so vibrant and light fast. And um, yeah. All right. So I'm going to mix up some colors here. And I'm going to get rid of some other color on my palette. All right, good. So I'm gonna use the bigger brush. I'm going to use this six round brush. And this is going to give me the, this is where I start getting loose and not too loose because I don't really like that loose. But as loose as I get, it's going to be with a six round. And I'm going to kind of start in the middle and just give some teal, or not teal, but the mermaid color. And there's no particular reason for starting in the middle. I think technically you would start from the bottom and work your way up because you want to use the darker feather or the farther, farthest back feathers first. But I don't know, something is just telling me to do it this way. So here we are. And I am and I am just doing some broad brush strokes. <clears throat> I'm already not liking how this is coming out. And I think it's the brush. I'm gonna switch brushes. I'm gonna switch brushes and use seven round. And this I don't know why I'm switching brushes. I just think that that one wasn't really working out for me. See, for some reason, this brush just kind of left a, a nice little, I like this little thing that it did at the end. Okay. All right. I'm going to now start from the bottom and go up. So it's a lot of purples kind of at the bottom. And to get that purple I like, I'm going to do the purple, purple, and I'm going to do some ivory or some indigo, and I'm going to mix up that color that I like. Now you want to definitely be, you know, not only sweepy with the brush, but you want to have a lot of water on your brush because that's what's going to create these broad strokes. And I think that's all I'm going to do. However, I am going to add a little bit of this pretty, pretty glitter. Ooh. Oh, that looks nice. Okay, now I'm going to start doing this phthalo blue. And I love the phthalo blue. It is so, so rich. It's probably one of Windsor Newton Cotman's richest color to me. And I'm going to 
just, um, you know, I want to, I want to make sure that the feathers kind of run off the bird a little bit. see that there's kind of some gaps here and I have some decisions to make and I just made them in my mind. I am going to blend the rare green herbs, which I used here, kind of down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some greenish glitter I don't necessarily like the stripiness of that because it looks a little, you know, you want things to blend a little bit more naturally. This is looking good so far. But finally, my very last step, I'm gonna take this beautiful green, which by the way, I already have plans for a hummingbird with this. And that will be my next video. <laughs> and I'm gonna really get in there and dab a lot of that on that's beautiful and I'm just gonna make some snoops love it all right a couple more all right that looks awesome all right I'm basically done however I need to um, draw this little hook of a, whatever that body part is called, a talon. But I also need to make a, something for this guy to sit on. And what do birds sit on? They sit on brown things. However, brown would be kind of ugly here, so I'm going to make a purplish brown. Yes, that will be pretty. And what do I got here? I've got some... I've already pre-mixed some colors. Um, so, all right. And the way I'm gonna do this is very carefully. So there's brown and then there's this purple. And I don't want it to be, I'm basically just hinting at you know, a branch, it doesn't have, I don't want it to be perfect looking because I don't want the viewer to be focused on how great this branch is. Do you know what I mean? I just want it to be a hint of a branch. It's a little too purple, which I, you know, a little too purple is not a word I normally say. However, I've got to tone this down, make it a little bit more on the brownish side. So I'm going to add some yellow because yellow is a complement to um, purple. So I can make it more muddy and brown if I do that. I could just add brown, but sometimes adding the complementary color just does something very special. So that looks good. So that takes the viewer's eye away from this interesting branch that I have created. And there we go. And now I want to make this hook of a foot. And I'm going to use, I'm going to just use black because I've used it here. And again, I'm going to be careful that I don't let this black bleed into this branch that I just created, but it might be inevitable, especially because for some reason I have like no patience tonight. And you need patience with watercolor, but that's all I'm going to do for that. And there you have it. And to be honest, I think this gorgeous thing looks a lot better than this, but it's fine. This was just a practice. This looks glorious. Now, if I wanted to get crazy, I could go in 
and do my splashes. Um, I'm not going to do that because there's actually some scripture verses here and so I don't want them to like mingle at all but anyways this looks great and when this is dry I'm going to take an eraser and just kind of erase up some of these lines that I see. It's okay if I could see them through the paint but I don't necessarily want to see them where there is no paint. So anyways that's all for tonight. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any other questions please comment below and I will try to get back to you. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Before I go though, I wanna just show you this beautiful shimmer. It just like, look at that. Oh, I get so excited looking at it. It's so beautiful. Oh, that looks awesome. I definitely recommend buying some glitter. These are fun, way too much fun. So great, compliments so many different things and I'm just super excited about this bird. So thank you so much for being part of this journey. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, I don't like this feather. It, it's not, I don't know, what do you call it? It just needs a little fixing. Sometimes my fixing leads to a disaster, so I'm gonna, Okay, I don't wanna, okay, I'm gonna do a little more. Okay, that looks good, no more though. Um, maybe just a little bit. All right, that's good. Okay, no more, this thing's done. Thank you for watching, have a great night.